If you go down to the ground and you got the ball, it should be a catch. Okay? It, it, it's it, it, to me, it's not rocket science. It's not like you're trying to rewrite the uh, the the Constitution. It's a catch, and a catch is a catch. Okay? So they come out and they say the dead catch would be a catch under this new ruling, which means the receiver's hands and going to the ground requirement uh, will be eliminated. So now if you have the ball in your hand, um, if you are going to the ground with the ball, uh, the must maintain control of the football while on the turf uh, to be awarded a legal catch. So wanted to give both you guys' thoughts. Us being Cowboys fans, we know about this rule, clearly. Obviously, we know about this one. But with it being uh, officially, I guess, reestablished or whatever they they want to call this. Um, I'll start with you though, Kevin. Yeah, this it's so frustrating because when I think about the whole rule, the De- I'm gonna call it the Des Bryant rule because that's what it is, the Des Bryant, uh, the Des Bryant rule in terms of this catch rule. This rule changed the entire trajectory of the Dallas Cowboys up oh, to even to today. Think about it. If that that catch is ruled a catch. Uh, for Des Bryant, I believe the Dallas Cowboys go on to win that 2014 divisional playoff round against the Green Bay Packers and then go up to Seattle, where I think they had a legitimate chance to beat the Seattle Seahawks uh, in that NFC Championship game that year to potentially um, get to the Super Bowl. And obviously the, what has transpired in the years since uh, that particular football game, the Cowboys have been up and down. Uh, in terms of a franchise, even though they haven't won a Super Bowl in the last 22 years anyway. I thought that 2014 year was the best team that the Dallas Cowboys have had probably in the last 10 seasons. Tony Romo was a legitimate MVP candidate that year. Des Bryant led the league in touchdown catches with 16. This was a very good football team that on that day, I believe, was the better football team uh, than the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers did what he did on a, on one leg virtually. Uh, against the Dallas Cowboys that day. But I think that rule and that catch changed the entire trajectory of the last four to five seasons for the Dallas Cowboys. But what was ultimately frustrating, in my opinion, was that the referee, what we saw as fans and what we were watching on television, referees didn't believe what they were seeing on the football field. You and I, in sitting there watching these games, we know what a catch is. We know what going to the ground is. We know what completing the process of a catch is. But it felt like referees were trying to tell me that I didn't know and understand what I was talking about and watching a catch. And that ultimately was frustrating because in a league where offense is, at a, is obviously a focal point, you would think that you would have rules that would ease it toward the offensive side of the football and make it easy for teams to score points and move the football down the field. But this rule made it so hard not only to understand what a catch was, but for offenses to continue to move the football down the field because you and I didn't know what a catch was. Or you knew what a catch was, the referee simply didn't know what it was. So I just thought the rule was ultimately frustrating because the referees thought uh, that they knew better than clearly us as fans and folks who watch these games when it comes to to football. Right, right. And we 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 got some we got some hate in the chat room already. Uh, Dollars and cents says <laughs> y'all need to cut Dez like yesterday. If my mom had a package, she would be my dad. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Okay, he says, uh, <laughs> y'all in major wow. kind of trouble hell. Uh, then he also says, what's frustrating is y'all still call yourselves America's team, having done ish in over a no. decade. Don't worry, we'll, we, we'll, get, we'll get to straight, strictly Cowboys here in a minute. Uh, go ahead, Tyler, and talk about this uh, catch rule. Uh, yeah, well, first off, it pisses me off. Because what they try to say is, with the Des Bryant catch rule, he didn't make a football move, which makes zero sense to me. He catches the ball, and then he takes two steps and stretches out for the goal line. If that is not a football, then I need to go back to school or something. But just, you know, to piggyback off what Kevin was saying, that was the best Cowboy team that we'd have had in a long time. Defense was stout. We had a running game and a passing game. Tony Romo was absolutely an MVP candidate that year. But more importantly, they whooped up on Seattle earlier in the season. I think they would have right. done the exact same thing. 
That's exactly right. True. Yeah, we, we killed Seattle that year. And so I wasn't concerned about Seattle at all because we had the perfect formula that nobody could stop. DeMarco was running through everybody. And once you bring everybody to the box, then we'll just throw it down the field of death. And no team proved they could stop it all year long until the refs just snatched the soul out of heart. I would never get over that game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they they truly broke a lot of everybody, all the fans' hearts, definitely. Um, now, and for Jelani, they messed up the Megatron catch, too. Right. And it's, right. Funny you, it's funny you just say that. Somebody just mentioned that. Dollars and Cents says, wait, was a Megatron catch before the Dez catch? Yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. And that's kind of, uh, this all started with the Calvin catch against Chicago. That's what Jelani said. Exactly. It, it it did. Now, and try to look back at this now, and they announced the Dez catch was a catch. It's almost like we already knew, we it. already knew that from the beginning. It's like you, you're just confirming everybody's complaint on this whole uh, referee call and on that whole staff. So, now we can move on. We can all now say we all know what a catch is, even though we knew what it was to begin with. Now we can all officially be on the same page. Fans, uh, whoever else, officials, everybody can all be on the same page. Now, one other thing from from this week, and then we're, we're gonna we're gonna get into the Cowboys talk, strictly Cowboys talk. But there is a new league that has officially started called the Alliance of American Football. It's supposed to start in February of 2019, right after the Super Bowl's over. So I don't know if any of you guys heard about this, but they got they got a lot of heavy hitters involved. They got Charlie Ebersol, who's the son of um, Dick Ebersol who, of NBC. They got Troy Palomalu involved. They got Heinz Ward, Justin Tuck, um, Jared Allen, Bill Polian, who Bill Polian is not, uh, he's starting to not be a spokesperson for the NFL because of some of the stuff he's been saying lately, I don't know if he's getting old or he's starting to lose his memory or what it may be, but uh, that's a whole other story. But every single time someone tries to come out with a league, if it's before or after the NFL, it normally is not successful. And I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this. Do you think this could possibly be Successful. I'm, I don't even think they have teams yet. They don't have. They really don't have anything. But it's supposed to be a professional league. The other part is I don't know if this is going to work hand in hand with the NFL. It's like a like a training league, or they're going to be trying to be totally separate. So I'll let you uh, start, Kevin. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? A A F. I guess is what it's going to be called. Off. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, and even before this announcement, obviously we saw Vince McMahon's, uh, Vince McMahon's announcement about the XFL coming back in 2020 uh, and him bringing back the XFL. So it's interesting because the CEO and founder and co-founder of this league is Charlie Ebersol. Now, Charlie Ebersol is the son of a former NBC executive, Dick Ebersol, who at the time, way back when in 1999, formed the original XFL with Vince McMahon. So you have an interesting situation where you have the son of Dick Ebersol starting a league a year before the XFL. So a lot of questions are starting to arise are whether or not he's trying to stick it potentially to Vince McMahon because Vince McMahon had some interesting things to say in that 30 for 30 docu- uh, ESPN um, films documentary about the XFL and the success and non-success of the league uh, and what happened. And this is a league that's going to start next year and already has executives in place like a Troy Polamalu and a Jared Allen uh, and others when it comes to evaluating talent and football operations and investors in this league. So I'm curious as to the motivations why this league was started. They're going to have some relaxed rules and some different rules uh, with this new league, but at the same time, there may be some other underlying motivations that I wonder will come if they will come out as this continues to go on, and to see whether or not uh, Charlie Ebersol will have a much more successful run with his own league um, in terms of this uh, alliance of American Football League uh, than Vince McMahon is going to have in 2020, because. 
uh, and DJ Dollars and Fizz makes a good point, obviously. Uh, Vince McMahon and Donald Trump uh, are, you know, BFFs. And the Dick Ebersols uh, of the world uh, and NBC is much more progressive, quote-unquote, if you will, uh, than Vince McMahon and, of course, Donald Trump. So it's some interesting underlying circumstances that are going on and taking place and whether or not they're trying to potentially undercut the potential success uh, of the XFL because, obviously, we, none of us had any idea that this was coming. And then all of a sudden they spring it on us. And in fact, it's going to start a year earlier than the XFL. And they've got a lot of heavy hitters trying to uh, run this league. So it's interesting to see how this league continues to move uh, going forward and provide an alternative to give us more football. Like we don't have enough of it already uh, as it is. And I think that's another conversation for another day, too, the oversaturation of football in this country to begin with. Um, but it gives guys an opportunity to develop, an opportunity to play and make money. Uh, who don't get the chance to play in the NFL or in the Canadian Football League, and we'll see how this turns out. But it'll be interesting to see some of the underlying um, motivations with this league as it continues to be formed and, and come out. Yeah, definitely. And you, you just you just made a great point. You know, with with Eversol and the, and with the XFL, I don't think this is a coincidence at all. I think this is definitely something that is maybe a spiteful move. Of course, they do want it to be successful. It's a business, but it sounds like there 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 is something deeper to this. So I definitely hear hear you and, and agree with you there. And then um, Tyler, let me know what's what's your thoughts on another league getting ready to be started. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how successful it's going to be. It's the off season of the NFL, which is kind of smart. But what I want to see happen is some type of farm system by the NFL if the NFL can work with this league to somehow develop players because you know they had NFL Europe they didn't right. run away with that right. and there's so many players that don't get drafted or don't make the practice squad league if they could develop some type of farm system like the MLB has maybe they can do it with this league that could help out a ton of players coming out of college but the timing to me it would only make sense if the the games were around the same time as the NFL so you can maybe do like the NBA D League where as in with, when your star get hurt you can send him down call to the developmental up. league yeah to work his way back or you can call someone up to the practice squad but that would only work if it's around the same time as the NFL and we all know that the NFL is king so the timing is just odd. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but if it takes out the, the XFL, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that I didn't even think about that, Tyler. I didn't even think about doing it at the same time as the NFL. So then you could call somebody up. That that is almost a a genius idea right there because there's the NFL doesn't do that. They have people on the yeah. practice squad, but you only have a limited amount. So that is that is almost uh, almost genius. But it sounds like they're not going to do that. They want to they want to start it in February. Um, all right. So breaking news right now. I'm breaking news right now on the BS3 Sports Show. Once again, we got Tyler Butler, and we have Kevin Gray, X Squad affiliates, very own Kyrie is going to be out reportedly for three to six weeks. After a successful knee procedure, that what does that do to these Celtics right now? Playoffs are getting ready to start very, very soon. I think we got a week and a half or so left in the regular season. You talking about Kyrie being out for three to six weeks? Um, real quick, what what does this do to the Celtics? And I'll, I'll start with you, Tyler. Man, that's devastating. Because uh, you never know what type of percentage is going to be back or be at once he comes back whether it's 70 or 80 percent and then you got to think about it is he if he's not a hundred percent do you just shut him down for the rest of the year to focus on next year when you have gordon haywood coming back as well so it, it's really going to be totally up to their medical staff and the front office how they want to situate with Kyrie. what if their seating drops to maybe like three or four in the east and you you know could face a calf team in the second round is it worth bringing him back for that? That's tough, man. I didn't see that coming. I know he said he was going to have surgery 
to demand a trade out of Cleveland. But that's just, man, what a, a –